Okay, after many, many attempts here, I finally beat this. I was recording myself, but uh, I figured instead of just uploading the recording, I would do a voiceover re and record my voiceover as I, as I do it, because I wasn't talking during it, so... Uh, um, I'm just going through my team setup here. And uh, I got my inspiration uh, from another YouTuber here, Chaos. Um, I'll throw the link to his video in the description here, but my, the set, this, the uh, inspiration for my setup was off of his run, or their run, I should say, and uh, we have similar equipment. He had better equipment than uh, I did. Um, some some are similar, um, like, like for example, his Sephiroth didn't have Shinra Blade there. I think he put Edged Wings for the magic attack. But I, I threw uh, Edged Wings on the back, and I actually ended up using Shinra Blade, especially in the last half of the fight. Instead of just spamming Kuja's Blade, um, Shinra Blade did a little more damage and had that uh, higher crit hit if I was able to hit him. So, you know what, I'm... I, you kind of got to get a little, a little bit lucky with a setup like this, but, uh, yeah, so that was my setup. I went through all the R abilities and everything. You can just pause it if you're interested in seeing any of that stuff. I went through it a little quick, but, uh, all right. And some of those, like the Circle Ruinra and the Fire Blow, like, you know, Breach, they didn't use all that stuff. You don't, some of, you, you you don't really need all the materia slots, so it's good to throw some stat sticks. But uh, some of the stuff you'll see I'm using is uh, imperative to the fight for sure. Like the triangle sigils you'll need to prevent one of the freeze lock hits at some point. And uh, both Cloud with his Zidane's Blade and Sephiroth with Kuja's Blade have a triangle sigil spot on the third one here. I have to start this the fight with uh, all three of these moves one after another. But here I'm holding on Kiraga so that she still gains her ATB gauge without actually using anything. Because even if you're in manual and your ATB is full, they will just fire off whatever the uh, AI thinks is the best move for them. But if you're holding to see the description, it will not. So that's why I did that. Okay. So I did that, did that, and... I'm um, waiting for a Kiragi here, I think. Yeah. Now, I move back over to him to make sure he does the Flare Star again. And then I did another Sanctuary there because there's a few times where my Cloud popped off Sanctuary too early in this second phase of the fight here. And um, Sanctuary the, at level 1 with no OB, like mine, it only lasts 10 seconds. So that's not enough time. And then you end up losing the Magic Defense before that second big hit there. Um, you want to make sure you're switching to defense for those hits as well, or you will die. Now you'll see, see me toggling back and forth between a lot of people, but like, staying on Aerith for the most part, especially in the first half of the fight. Uh, reason being is sometimes your attackers, they don't fire off their attacks right away like they should. Um, so I, I switch over to them to get them moving more attacks per second, you know. It's important. Um, this is me playing Risky. Aerith throwing these Night Blooms here. I don't have to do that. Like, they can kill uh, Black Wolf's one with it, all its defenses stacked. But I'm trying to hurry things up here. Um, I've gotten through this phase with and without night blooms, but I've died more often when I'm doing the night bloom stuff that I'm that you see me doing here. So it's not really necessary. You can play it safe and just make the battle a little longer um, by not worrying about his defenses. Night bloom definitely comes in handy um, later on, regardless though in the in the third part of the fight. Okay, and that's another reason I wanted to get the night blooms off on him though. Um, I wanted his defenses lower for one of the limits. I switched to cloud just to finish him off. Now, Sephiroth went and did that on uh, Walt's run, Ruin 1, but uh, saved his ATB because Cloud finished him. I wish they were a little smarter, but don't we all? Okay. So I'm... A winning run is going to have a lot of good plays, you know, and probably risky plays too. And it's also going to depend on luck in general. 
Um, for critical hits, especially. I was... Man, I was uh, cutting it pretty low there. Luckily, I have Kira on everybody. So, when you switch to defense mode and someone's really in need, Kira's, like, Cloud's using a Kira right there. And I think Sephiroth's going to, too. That's the reason I stayed in defense mode, too. Just so that the AI for the other two characters use their Kiras. Because I saw their ATB going up there. It's not really all that wise to stay in defense mode. Because your, um, your meter moves down. And you want it to stay on attack and defense max. Pre pretty much at all times. But, like... While you're in defense, it kind of controls the AI for the other two, so um, weigh out your options and whatever's better for you, but in general, probably more than 90% of the time, you just want your meter to max. It just sucks when I switch off of Aerith to like make sure Sephiroth or Cloud does the right move, and then Aerith ends up popping off a Night Bloom when she needs the Kiraga, and then there goes the whole battle, because Kiraga didn't go off, and someone dies, and... That's just rough. Okay, so I remember this part here. Uh, Black Bolt 3 and 2 is still alive, but it's, instead I just switched right over to Black Bolt 3, and I let Sephiroth finish him with the uh, AoE hit here. Well, Cloud and Aerith just started off right against uh, Black Bolt 3 here with his defenses down right away. Um, that Night Bloom was just for show. I knew it wasn't going to hit him. All right. Defense mode. Okay, get some Kira's in. And, oh yeah, it also depends on who he's going to freeze lock here too. Because, I don't know, like, maybe you can have enough defenses with your DPS characters. But if he freeze locks uh, Sephiroth or Cloud, at least the... Uh, at least after his sigil breakpoint which is coming up. Uh, Cloud or Sephiroth would just die, like, no matter what. Like, there's no point in even having them at max health. Because it is a physical hit as well, so I can't use, uh, Sanctuary for magic defense. Uh, like, it, does, it doesn't do anything against, uh, the strike hit here that he's gonna attempt doing, but, uh, we're gonna break him. So here is cool because whether he gets Sephiroth or Cloud, either one of them have that extra triangle sigil spot on the third materia slot to, uh, break him faster. And then Aerith has got it too, so no matter who he freezes, we're going to break him pretty fast um, with just two people. Now we're getting some defenses down, and I did not want to save limits pretty much at all. He uh, Healing Wind was actually an exception, so uh, that was just ironic I mentioned that at that point. But when it came comes to the limits, I was not saving to use them all, up, all at the same time to get the bonus or anything, uh, and I was also not using them... Um, to cancel his moves like you can do. Like the enemies can use a move like Blizzaga or Thundaga, stuff like that, and you use a limit, and it'll still, they'll still do the action, but they won't actually do any damage, and then when you go to the limit break animation like this, um, they'll go back to do that same move they were just about to do. So it kind of um, moves the battle a little further in your favor, uh, if that makes sense. But I did not take advantage of that in this battle either. The reason why I was popping off the limit breaks as soon as humanly possible is because towards the end of the battle, like even beyond this point, um, you can, you might be able to get a, another limit break in, like one additional one compared to what you would have had if you saved them. So that's, that was really important and uh, vital to winning, I think, or getting further in this battle in general. I knew Aerith was going to die there, obviously, and I wasn't going to try to heal her. Now she was less than half health and I, it, I got lucky. It, that he went for Aerith, because if he went for Cloud or Sephiroth, they would have died at full health, and they're my DPS, so they're, they're what's really important right here, between Cloud's free energy and Sephiroth, Shockblade Plus, um, back and forth, I knew Cloud's limit break was coming, I didn't know if he was going to freeze him in time, so I, I blasted that off, and then I think I got one free energy and one uh, uh, Shockblade off, or one of them killed him, either way, awesome. Now my Aerith at full health, in defense mode, actually survives that strike hit at like with like less than 30 HP, um, which is funny. But regardless, I didn't need to do that in this battle. Um, it's just I'm glad he went for Aerith when Aerith was dying, uh, so he didn't kill my DPS. I kind of lucked out. Uh, so 
There's my stats if anyone's curious. Took me a little over five minutes. Yeah, good stuff. And, I mean, it's... Like, if you gotta spend 3,000 just to pull another weapon, it's honestly not really worth it. You only get 200 blue crystals and a Final Fantasy IX title. If you really want that title, I guess it's worth it. But, uh, like, I blew another 3,000 crystals just to pull another Zidane sword, and I got lucky and got it. Oh, uh, and, uh, that pushed me over to the win, too. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um... Definitely check out Chaos's video too, which, like I said, that's who inspired my team setup. It's not all the same, so if you see my video and, uh, oh, look at that, I'm getting a call. Well, yeah, uh, take care, guys.